everybody, and welcome back to The Tea with Crema. My name's Chris, I'll be on your host today, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. Hello, everyone. So for those that are paying attention to our recording journey, for the first time in almost a calendar year, Emma and I are recording not just in the same country, Mm-mm. not just in the same time zone. Mm-mm. But we are back in the same city, Fort Worth, Texas. Woo-hoo! Fort Worth, Fort Worth. We finally made it back. It has been a literal year. It's going to be very short-lived. Our next episode will not be recorded like this, but that's okay. The point is, it happened. It happened again. That's all that matters. So we are back, ready to go. Today's episode, we are talking about summertime, summertime love, summertime sadness, summertime feelings, all the things that you really associate the songs of summer. That is our theme, our episode today. Before we get started, Emma, what are you drinking? I am drinking a generic tea. It is from Great Value. Shout out to Walmart. It's a lemon and ginger tea. Um, I'm only drinking it because I can't find the rest of the tea in my mom's house. And this is just on the top shelf. So it's really good. I've been drinking it all week. What are you drinking this week, Chris? First of all, we don't shout out Walmart. You can keep your money. I don't need it. Oh, sorry. We don't support you, Mr. Walton. No sponsorships. Mm -mm. Pay your taxes, first of all. Mm -hmm. Uh, And your workers while you're at it. Mm -hmm. Everybody, okay? (laughs) We've got some things you need to work out. Don't be sponsoring me. (laughs) So today, I am drinking a Nujo Roasted Root Brew by Nujo Tea. And it's a caffeine tea because it is a little bit in the afternoon. And this one was interesting because it is, the description says it's a great tea for coffee lovers. Mm-hmm. And like, as soon as I opened the package, I smelled it. I was like, oh, that's really aromatic. Mm, yummy. So it was, it was really interesting. And it is, the, the part that got me is like, coffee lovers usually love caffeine. So I'm really, I guess if you're looking for a caffeine free alternative, that's what this was really going for. And it said it says that it's gluten free. I didn't know tea had gluten as an option, so I need to clarify if that's like oh I know common yes because like barley tea Who drinks barley tea Koreans barley e- tea yeah East Asian yeah. I've never seen it at the grocery stores. Now I'm gonna look. That's why that's remember that one time when I got the cold one from the vending machine, and I was like, I'm not about this life. But that's like my sister's favorite type of tea. Interesting. So it sounds like I have a tea I need to go find. Yeah. But overall, it's a really earthy tea. Pretty chill. I don't know what about it would scream coffee lover, but the color, it looks like coffee. I was about to ask, does it taste like coffee? Is that Not why? Really. It tastes like tea, like an earthy tea, like a black tea. That's kind of, it's really confusing because it is caffeine free, but it's a black looking tasting tea. So I don't really know. Hmm. And it says that it's organic, gluten free, caffeine free, antibiotics, prebiotics, all the stuff that people use. All the biotics. <laughs> all the biotics. So it's interesting. I don't know if I would buy it, but it happened. So very nice. Me like that. Mm-hmm. Sounds delicious. But back to our episode. So as you know, we've done a Halloween episode, winter holidays, New Year's, Christmases, all the things. So now we got to really talk about the big old block of holiday. That us educators usually get called summer, right in the Ma. middle of the year. A good old two months just off. Well, I guess not all the way off. You still gotta go. I was like, don't way. be don't be saying it's off because you know people be always like to say, Oh, well, teachers get a whole summer off. Um, no, we're still working. Some of us are still planning, some of us are still attending trainings and professional development. So summer school. Summer school because they don't pay us enough, so then we have to work summer school. Do not get me started anyway, beside the point. And just to clear it up for everyone who has ever had this misconception, ever, teachers do not get paid in the summer. Mm -mm. Our paycheck is just split across 12 months, but we only get paid for the nine months that we are working, okay? Just to clarify, there's no magic miracle free labor happening in the summer. We just go unpaid. And there's also some states that they do not pay their teachers in the summer. So they only get their salary for those nine months. So just to clear it on up, no one is out here getting paid for not doing no work. Mm -hmm. No one is getting paid for not working in the summer. But anyways, just to make sure people know, I got really got to start. Would you describe summer as your favorite season? 
No. <laughs> I know <laughs> that the, you were thinking about I it. was really thinking about it. I think as a child, I did love summer because that was the time when like my cousins would come down to Hawaii and like my cousin from Michigan would always come and visit because that was like the time that she would be able to come out. And, uh, but now as an adult, no, it's just, it's hot. I cannot deal with it. I don't do summer well, especially in Texas. Um, I try to leave Texas in the summer. So <laughs> there's that. Is it your favorite season? No, hands down. No, there was no hesitation. No worries, no contemplation required. It's not, I don't like it. I never have liked it. Some of my favorite activities are summer specific, but as a season, trash. Trash. And maybe it's because I'm from Texas mm-hmm. and every summer is 105 plus degrees for multiple days. Mm-hmm. And again, as a kid, I had tolerance because I know no better, but mm-mm, I'm an adult now. Things I'm not doing, anything out, 108, 109, just have me, it's a wrap, put me back inside. Mm -hmm. I tried to tell Chris that we should go to Six Flags when my sister had come down a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, Chris, do you want to go to Six Flags? He's like, I'll see y'all after. (laughs) Things I'm not doing, doing that. We didn't end up going because we realized that it would probably be a safety hazard, (laughs) but. I don't know how they're open. (laughs) I don't. I don't. People over here paying $11 for water bottles, stand out in the heat all day. It don't make no sense. So no, summer is not my favorite. But would you say, do you have a favorite summer memory? Something that you're like, it's in your brain. You really loved it. And it is quintessentially summer. So my parents owned their own business growing up in Hawaii. And that meant that we didn't have any daycare during summer. So my mom always sent us to summer fun. She could have probably just like, we could have probably gone to work with her, but it was also like, she just wanted us out of her hair. (laughs) That's a long time to have to be with a child. And after having to watch my nephews, and I love my nephews to death, they're my favorite people. But no, I don't know how parents do it. But I also understand that like, summer fun is expensive. It was called summer fun. It was basically summer daycare from eight to five. And you would do pool activities, you'd play dodgeball, you'd play, um, you know, all these things. Every Wednesday we went to the beach. So that's like the one thing I remember about summer. And then I also just remember my cousin like coming down and visiting and like, or me going over to Michigan. I did that one summer. So those are like things I remember. And I just, I just remember just never wanting. And then when school started, you're like, oh, like I was ready though, because I was like, I'm done with all of this. I'm ready to... (laughs) be back on a routine and stuff like that. But that is the one thing I do remember about summer. How about you? I learned how to swim in the summer one year. I don't remember how old I was. I don't remember what year it was. I just Where? I was a child at some at a friend's pool. Ah. Because my, my parents do not really swim. And so people that did not teach us how to swim, my parents. That was not, that was not a skill set that I picked up from them. And so we had to enlist the help of other people who knew how to swim to teach us how to swim. And we did all the fun little cutesy lessons. I learned how to doggy paddle and float and do all that stuff. And so I know, I know it's a favorite memory, but like, honestly, it's, it's really funny in hindsight. It was not funny in the moment, but as I was like, we learned how to swim. Like I was able to swim by myself independently, having a great time. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing a snorkel. Uh huh. And I tried to, I heard someone calling my name and tried to look up. Oh no. While swimming. Oh no. And so at that time, the snorkel went under the water. Oh. And I like breathed in water while swimming and then like freaked out. And then all of the training that I just received went all the way out the window. And so now I'm drowning because somehow I made it to the eight foot side of the pool. Oh my gosh. And like, I'm just like, ah! And luckily it wasn't one of those silent drowns. It was very like, throw your arms up in the air, do your best. Like, I need someone to come in. Wait, feel like you just don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it was very that. And, you know, they saved me. I survived, I think. And I did sit out for a little bit. But I definitely had that childhood resilience because less than 30 minutes later. He was back in there. Back in the water like nothing ever happened. And you're kind of like a fish too. I feel like you really enjoy water. All the universe needed to do was show me that one time how to drown. 
And I got it. I was like, I got you, universe. This ain't gonna happen to me again. Because the next time I drown, it's gonna be for real. (laughs) Survival of the fittest. You know, speaking of drowning stories, that literally just triggered a memory in my brain of when I almost drowned my sister. Um... (laughs) My mom is also from Hawaii. She's from a different island. And we had gone to um, Big Island, where she's from, to go to her one of her class reunions. And so they used to go swimming in a, in a harbor. And I've never swam in a harbor before this. I'd always swam, you know, at the beach, at the pool. So I consider myself like a pretty strong swimmer. I was probably like six or seven. I had taken all the lessons, knew all the things. But because of the way that the harbor was situated, it's kind of like you just jump off and you're in the water. You know, all of a sudden you're in you know, 10 foot, 12 foot deep water. So my sister's in the water. She's like swimming, you know, she's treading water and stuff like that. And she goes, Emma, come in, like, come in. And I was like, no, I'm good. And she's like, it's okay. I I got you. I got you. So I'm, mind you, yeah, I'm like six, I'm like five or six at this point. So she's 12 or 13. And she's like, I'll catch you. And I'm like, okay. So I literally jump in and I immediately freak out because I don't know how to like tread like I'm not I I don't know why what happened just like the fact that it just dropped out under me I don't know because usually if you're at a beach you kind of like walk out and you can kind of like float in there but this was just an immediate drop off and so I'm like oh my god oh my god starting to freak out I'm literally dunking my sister in and my sister is like not trying to like throw me off of her but she's also not trying to die so she literally (laughs) takes me she throws me off of her and she goes float (laughs) And then she goes up and she's like, mom, did you not see that? And my mom's like, well, why did you let her jump to you? (laughs) Because my mom also does not swim like that. Like she used to, she grew up going to the beach. She grew up swimming and all that stuff. But even now she doesn't get in the water with us. So she kind of was just watching and she was like, well, hopefully I go home with two daughters today. (laughs) Went from two to zero real quick in one day. Oh my God. Oh, just took her out. Just try to take her out. I did not. She's the one who told me to jump to her. So that's my story. Loki tried to take you out. I fired immediately. Y'all both took each other out. Oh my goodness. That's wild. But even though, so even though it's not your favorite season, do you have a favorite thing that just really only comes around and it's, it's just summer and you can't really, even if it's around the whole year, you Mm -hmm. still just, you can't do it. It's just a summertime activity for you. Ah. I think it's either it's it's a tie. I would say like going to the beach is always number one. Um, like you can go to the beach anytime in Hawaii and you can go to the beach anytime, you know, in California and things like that. But that's like the one time I think about going to the beach. Um, but my favorite, like absolute favorite thing to do is travel because that was also when we were kids would be the only time we could travel because both my sister and I were off. So we'd go to California, we'd go see my cousins, we'd go to Michigan, like that was our time for like family vacations. So even now as an adult and like as a teacher, thankfully, you know, I get summers off, but that's been the times when I get to go and travel abroad. Um, sometimes your girl moves abroad while she's there, <laughs> but yeah, this is the time for me to like do the summer traveling thing. And that's like my favorite thing about summer, even if it is so horrendously expensive to travel, but yeah. What's your favorite thing to do? Well, being from landlocked Texas, not having access to the beach, even on the best of days, and um, not uh, not really being able to travel. My favorite summer thing is watermelon. Yes. I love watermelon. It's, even though you can technically buy it any time of year, it's just, it's expensive and it's not, it's not a sweet, it's not the same. It's like, you can almost feel that it was grown in a lab on a Petri dish. Like it just, it's not a real watermelon. And so every year it comes around. I have to have at least one. I think this year I've already had two. And I have plans to have more in the future this year Mm -hmm. alone. Before it ends. Before it ends. It's just something about it. I don't know if it's a southern thing. I don't know if if the rest of the country has watermelons or (laughs) wind. But and then the ones that you get in Texas are grown in Texas. So it's you you get Texas watermelon. And so that is my like I'm going to have a watermelon every summer. You're not going to play with me in a watermelon. It's going down. I can't have it no other season. I don't like summer, but I will have a watermelon. Thank you very much. And it's like Texas watermelon, I will say. Texas watermelon tastes different. 
you know, like I've had watermelon everywhere else, but Texas, you're right. I also, yeah, tropical fruit season, like mangoes, this is a mango season. It's watermelon season. It's like, it's just melon season. And then now living in Japan where it's literally $45 for a watermelon. And then I come to Texas and it's like $5 for a big old watermelon. I, I've it's been eating like seven now, but still. It's very sad. But it's also huge. Like, it's not like a small little personal <laughs> watermelon, right? Like, it's $45 for one of those little personal ones. Oh, no. That's terrible. Those are like $5. But... Watermelon's not native to Japan, so mm-hmm. <laughs> makes sense. They gotta, they gotta get it there somehow. <laughs> that's so sad. Those, that's so unfortunate. I hope the people in Japan get to try watermelon someday. It's a blessing, truly, honestly. I just imagine, like, being on an airplane, like, what's on the airplane? Watermelons. And, like, the big watermelons, it's just, <laughs> everyone gets a watermelon. You gonna try a Texas watermelon today. You get a watermelon, and you get a watermelon, and you get a watermelon. <laughs> Literally just rolling it off the back of the plane. Everyone's just like, get a watermelon. <laughs> oh, is that what you meant by favorite thing about summer? I definitely Baby did. Activity. Oh, okay. Stuff. I was like, well, yeah, definitely my favorite thing about summer, though, is like barbecue season, you know, like s'mores and mm. hot dogs and like steak. And that's also something that I really enjoy, too. Mm, I was growing up with the barbecues. That's real. That is because, yeah, you could do a winter barbecue. You could do a fall barbecue. You could do a spring one. But a summer barbecue with all the fixings, is... Quintessential. It's quintessential. And honestly, probably one of the few things that I miss while being a vegetarian. Because part of it is just the experience of it all. And I was like, my mom has tried really hard to accommodate me at, like, barbecues that we've had. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, okay, well, we have to cook all of his stuff first so that it doesn't get all, like, covered in grease and all that stuff. So we have to cook all his stuff first, and then we'll cook the regular stuff for for everyone else. And then it doesn't help that my sisters had a very, very slow journey into also maybe being a vegetarian. And so it's a very odd, like, are you going to eat any of this? Are you eating the vegetarian stuff? Like, what are you, can you pick a side? Because I'm confused. What do we need to buy? It's a whole thing. And so we still try it. Like, it's happened a few times, but it doesn't happen as often. Because there's just so many things to accommodate for. Mm, at that point, I'm just like, this is exhausting. Just go put it, and it's 108 degrees. Go put it in the oven <laughs> so I can stay inside. This is wild. Put on the George Foreman. Get the little grill lines, okay? It is so, oh, and then especially to bake or put something in the mm. oven. Then the whole house is just hot. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I would say, I'll go to some bakery and get some baked goods, but I'm not turned on by the oven. <laughs> it does not turn on in the entire month of June and July. It just, it's not turning on. <laughs> it's already expensive with the air conditioning on this whole time. We cannot be spending more electricity on this oven. <laughs> more gas. <laughs> There's nothing happening. Not at all. <laughs> just leave it outside and it'll bake. <laughs> You'll be fine. If you can't cook it on the sidewalk, then you don't. It'll need to be made today. That is a wild thing. So if you had, like, the most ideal summer plan, what would that be? What would that look like for you? We're talking, don't worry about the paycheck. Don't worry about the logistics too, too much. But just, like, what would Emma do in a perfect summer? I have always dreamed, and I always wanted to do this, but again, I've always been broke. (laughs) I've always wanted to backpack across Europe. And I know that's so basic. Like, I just wanted to backpack. Like, it doesn't even have to be Europe. It just had, I just want to go somewhere for like two months, just travel, you know, live my best life, maybe Thailand, you know, go to like hit all the places. I just want to do that, which I mean, child of the world, you know, be one with the world. When I was in college, I was like, yeah, I want to do Europe. And then I went to Europe and I was like, you know what? It's not all that. It's cool. That's it. That's all. I mean, and ideally on a beach. Ideally near a beach. Like, I don't want to do something coastal. That would be, like, my dream summer, though. What about you? I tell you, I would be checking off all of the different types of beaches. White sand beaches, check. Black sand beaches, check. Nude beaches. beaches, Oh. Check. (laughs) (laughs) We're really focusing on the sand. Oh, I thought we were talking about the peoples. (laughs) Thank you. Really... (laughs) really checking out the sands here of the world because I didn't realize that there were so many different sands of beaches and just like the different waters and the different foods that go with those beaches. I have not really done any, I will say I haven't done any of the fun like beach activities. So when you go and you see the people on the sea out in the ocean or the people that go, I 
parasailing, I think, where you drug on the boat and your parachute goes up. Haven't, haven't done that. I don't know if you'd like that, though. Probably not, but I just want to do it. Oh, no, I just mean, like, I was just talking to my friend about this over the summer because we had gone on a booze cruise. And I'm already someone who gets seasick, so I don't know why I decided to tell my friends, let's go do this. And then we got on the boat, and I was like, y'all, I'm a little sick. And she was telling us about how when she went parasailing, the boat was so choppy to get to the place where they could get enough air that everyone was throwing up on the way to this place to, to parasail. And then she says that she has on camera this man and his daughter had gone up. And so the dad, her dad was recording for them because they all like had to record for each other. And she's like, yeah, you know, they're up there. And he's like, whoa. And then all of a sudden you just see him vomit. <laughs> and it's like, Bleh! and it just comes off the side of the, but he's still up there and he's still wooing, but he just threw up. <laughs> So that's why when I heard that, I was like, I don't know if you'd like that, because you get pretty motion sickness, too. <laughs> you can tell me where they went, so I don't go there. I think it was in Hawaii, so that just, would be great. just don't go to Hawaii. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because all the videos that I've ever seen, they're, they don't look like they're that far offshore, but I don't I don't know the, the logistics behind parasailing. I just know I want to check it off the little box. Just one time for the one time. I'm also afraid of heights, so... Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, I think it could be fun, though. <laughs> Exactly, to say I did it the one time. And then could you imagine, like, the little buckle comes undone, and I'm just, like, flying away. I'm just like, I can't, I can't even do this. They're like, why isn't he screaming? Honestly, he's overwhelmed. Like, he's... He's overstimulated. <laughs> it's too much. You probably will not hear from him until he lands. Can't, <laughs> if he, he makes it back. He might, have, he might have had a heart attack up there. We don't know. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. My God. That would be my, that would be my ideal plan. I just, there are so many different sand type beaches and it just it fascinates me and i want to check them out and it's like crazy because even when we went to costa rica just going from coast to coast because we had seen both the eastern and western side Mm -hmm. so we saw both oceans and on one of the sides was like the black sand beach because it was right next to the volcano because that's how you get black sand beaches and on the opposite side was like the white sand beaches and so like isaac and i always talk about it we're like man we really liked like the caribbean side like the what the water that was closer to the Caribbean, because even though it was like a lot of seaweed, there was no jellyfish. On the opposite side, it was all jellyfish. So like we'd be in the water and then we'd be like getting stung and we're like, what the heck is that? And our tour guide was like, Oh, it's the tentacles, like the jellyfish will like lose tentacles and then their tentacles are still like floating, so they'll like still sting you. And we're like, Sir <laughs> Let me tell you about my experience in the Pacific Ocean. Everything in that ocean is trying to kill you. The sand the water, the fish, the jellyfish, it's all trying to kill you. I, the three times I've been to the Atlantic Ocean, or the Pacific Ocean, mm -mm, nope. And then I confirmed it because I went back to the Atlantic Ocean just to make sure it wasn't just me getting older. No, the Atlantic Ocean is just so much chiller, nicer, it's friendlier, it invites you in. I've never been to the Atlantic. so calm. Have I been to the Atlantic? Try it out. Probably... Probably, maybe a little bit, kind of. The Caribbean sees, like, at Atlantic waters. I gotta look up where Costa Rica is. I mean, I know where it is. I need to look up what oceans it's next to. It is the next Caribbean to... The Caribbean is right, but, like, the Caribbean sea is, like, an offshoot of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yes, so I liked that side more than I liked... Mm-hmm. Was that the Pacific Ocean? Have you ever seen how big the Pacific Ocean is, like, on... Like, from a 3D point of view? No, I don't really... <laughs> it'll, mm-hmm. it'll make you overwhelmed, but it's large. That's why everything's trying to kill you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Everything's big and just trying to kill you all the time. Nope, not for me. But in any case, I think it's time for our... Rapid Fire Question! In new Tea with Crema fashion, Emma has our first question. We'll let her open up with this question that she has prepared for today's episode. (laughs) Mic check, mic check. Would you rather have a job that paid you $150,000 a year with job security until retirement or a job that paid you $400,000 a year with a job that's dependent on the U.S. economy? So the economy goes down, you fired. Whereas the other one, you're going to, you have a job until you want to retire, but you're only ever going to get paid 150 k 
So do you get rehired if the comedy bounces back, or...? I'm assuming yes. So I'm assuming, I from what it sounded like in the question, it almost felt like, yes, it's 400000 but it's, like, dependent on the economy. So if the economy's down, your pay goes down. If it's up, your your pay goes up. Well, if you put it like that, I would probably put... I'd choose the $400,000 job, because if you think even about, like, your retirement and the way you do your retirement when you start out younger... You want to be more aggressive with it because, yeah, you're going to experience those downturns really bad. Like this year, for example, don't even look, don't look at your retirement accounts. It's not good, but it can't stay like this. And so eventually it will recover. And because everything increases in value, eventually, ideally, you would make more than that $400,000 at some point. Mm -hmm. And it would all even out, work out in the end. And if you're diligent, and not living above your means at 400000 you'll be fine because you'll always be able to afford your necessities. So putting it like that. Interesting. And then you save up for unemployment, when, and then you can be fun employed. Fun employed. That's all I ever want to be. I just want to be a stay-at-home wife. Anyway, mm-hmm. I, on the other hand, did not think about it like that. I was just like, 400000 but depending on the U.S. economy, I don't know, this economy low-key be scaring me all the time. I can't look at <laughs> can't look at my retirement because I feel like I'm going to be at zero. Can't look at nothing. So I chose the one hundred fifty k, which I was like, I feel like you can live off one hundred fifty k, you know, in Texas especially. For now. For now, you know, inflation and all that stuff. But I was like, the question was really the person who had done it was on, it was on his um, Instagram story. He was kind of just seeing like, do people value job security more than financial gains? Yeah, financial gains. And at the end of the, at the end of the survey, everyone had, or not everyone, it was actually pretty split even, even when I had voted, it was 56, 44. And I think at the end, it was still like very close, like almost 50, 50. I mean... I think it's just, like, the factors. I mean, if you're going to ask me about, if you frame it in that specific way about, like, security versus monetary opportunity, I'm going to go with security. Because I know. I know what it's going to be. But I think also, like, the values are so different that, like, 150000 versus 400000 variable, like, that's not, that's a very different, first of all, 400000 what is that? I don't even, what would I do so much? It's a problem, honestly. <laughs> that first year, wild. Wild. Hopefully the U.S. economy don't go down the next year. <laughs> because I wouldn't be ready the second year. But <laughs> all the years after that, we'd be fine. But like that second year, I just had to. Wild. I just have to learn my lesson one time at a one time. <laughs> I ain't never had this much kind of money, so <laughs> we just had to be out here. But after that, I think it would be fine. But I... Like the stability thing, I would if it was 150 stable versus 150 fluctuations, mm-hmm. 150 stable all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but see it. That's just the way they did it. You know, you gotta, but you gotta like spend money to make money, right? You gotta. Oh, also for those of you who are currently looking at the Powerball at time of recording, it's 1.09 billion. According to Isaac and his statistics teacher, this is the time to play. Interesting. Okay, shout out Isaac's uh, statistics teacher. If I win. I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> you get that. No, if I if I win, Texas is one of those states that you don't have to reveal your identity. Y'all won't know I've won. You'll know. Like based oh. on like my Instagram story, but you won't know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I will never tell you. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh. Okay, my question comes from Jeffrey and Justice. Oh, love that. Thanks, guys. Um, we were having a really interesting debate, and we're just gonna go ahead and settle it today. Okay. So this question, we have really two two polar opinions, and I just want to make sure we're going to put it to the listeners. Actually, it's going to be on our social media. It's going to be a vote. We're going to need everyone's opinions on this question. Uh So, Jeffrey, I hope you're listening because this one is for you. I just wanted to prove a point. So, the question is related to your thermostat. Is 72 degrees the same whether you've put the system on heating or cooling? the heck kind of thermodynamics question is this? I don't like 70 know. Degrees, is 72 degrees hot and 72 degrees cold different? I want to say yes, but I feel like that sounds dumb. <laughs> so I will say I said they're different. Because, right? Like when you're, because when in the wintertime, I put my thing on the heating and it's at 72 and it's warm in here. But during the summer, it's at 72 and it's cold. 
<laughs> it's like a relative. It's a relative thing. It's a Is relative it psychological? Difference. I don't. I, I think, but I think it's different. Jeffrey is very adamant that the 72 degrees to 72 degrees is the same. I get that, it's, though. I understand that. Like, coming from a science te- we are both science educators, Christopher. As science educators, that makes sense, right? 72. They are different. I would say yes, because I know what it feels like to be 72 hot versus 72 cold. <laughs> exactly. You know. It's, like, as soon as you got done and you were like, oh, <laughs> you knew exactly what I was talking about. 70 degrees hot. And so he's called, they're not the same. I was really about to say, I was like, someone's about to clown the F out of us in this episode. <laughs> we gonna see, because those have to be the two options. That's it. We can't change it. Okay, so Jeffrey said yes, or so Jeffrey said no, you said yes. What did Justice say? Justice agrees with me that they're different. <laughs> Sorry, Jeffrey, you're three to one at this point. <laughs> because, and that's the thing. so they were arguing about it, and I was on the phone, and I was like, Jeffrey, what are you talking about? They are different. They are not the same. And he was like, bro, what are you talking about? 72 is 72. I was like, mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> then put your house on heating right now. Put your house on 72 heating right put, now. <laughs> put it on 72 high and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> and then FaceTime me in 20 minutes. <laughs> so no, it's different. No, no, no. So it's going to be on the Instagram. We're going to vote. We got to settle this once and for all. He was like, I need a, an official vote. Officially. To know, to put it to bed. I'm telling you right now, you're not doing so well, Jeffrey. It's you against the world. So we're going to have to see. We're about to have all these bioengineering, all these science majors coming after me for this. But it's cool. Because it's not. That's okay. Because they, they are not the same temperature. They're not. Mm-mm. 72 degrees cold is not the same 72 degrees hot. Mic drop. I rest my case. Emma, where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter at The Tea with Crema. You can also find us now on YouTube and anywhere that you can stream your podcast. If you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, you can find us on Venmo at The Tea with Crema. We hope to see you next time. Bye!